Hey, welcome guys. Welcome to the channel. I'm Mr. Reef Buster. I am Monty. Today is episode 13. Um, wow. A lot has happened since we did episode 12. Um, we got, I got new lights installed. I got the Aqua Illumination HD26s installed. Um, I got new invertebrates. We got anemone in the tank, and most importantly, like everybody's talking about, we got the coronavirus, COVID-2019. So a lot has happened since episode 12, so we got a lot to catch up on. So let's get started. So first thing I'm going to start off is the tank is doing great. So since episode 12... I know a lot has happened, but the tank is doing really, really good. I'm really happy with the progression of it. It's slow and steady, just like I wanted it. Nothing surprised, nothing from the left field um, happened so far. And if I move my big self away, you can see she looks pretty good. And I mean, I mean, the AI lights, they, they do the tech justice. I mean, if you saw the, my AI Prime video, the review and unboxing, you, you, you know, I mean, it's a really great, it's an amazing light. I love it. The tank looks so much better than it did uh, with the Chinese lights on it. So, I'm going to show you guys, you guys will get some close-up looks of the tank. Um, a lot has happened in the tank since then, and a lot is going to happen going into the future so let's talk about COVID-19 so right now I, I, live, I live in New York so from what we're hearing starting Monday the 23rd New York might be on lockdown so I mean I've been working remotely for the past week so I've been home the whole week last week and you know trying to make the best of everything you know um, there's not much you can do you just have to kind of go with the flow be safe out there and you know just be safe be cautious and perfect time to take care of your reef tanks I mean we always make excuses you know we have work we got this we got that uh, we don't have time to take care of our tanks. Now is the perfect time. We got all the time in the world. We're stuck home. You know, everybody's in quarantine mode in a way, no matter where you live in the States or even abroad. So this is the perfect time, guys, and I want to talk about that today. <coughs> My cough is getting a little bit better. I don't have COVID. <laughs> so I got tested, so I'm good. Uh, this is just a little cold that never goes away. So my doctor gave me antibiotics, so I'm getting much better now. And so let's, let's get to you know the topic right now with COVID. Um, you know, it's something we have never experienced. Um, probably, I know I haven't experienced it, experienced it in my lifetime, and I'm sure most of you probably haven't either. Um, so this is uncharted territory for everybody. You know, we don't know what to do. Um, we don't know how, what to expect. You know, I'm not, I went shopping earlier today. Um, the roads are empty. I mean, which was good for me. I get to drive faster. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, the roads are empty. There is no stores. I went to BJ's. There's barely stuff there. I couldn't get half the stuff I needed, so I went to make another trip. And you know, everybody is and everybody's so cautious now. Like before, people were, weren't taking it seriously. So now everybody, you know, coming is coming to grips with the severity of the situation, which is good. Um, because you know, we need to make sure um, we do everything not to get infected. This way people who already got infected could be treated. You know, so everybody gets sick and you go to the hospital. To, there's not enough beds in the hospital to take care of that many people. You know what I mean? So be safe out there, guys. That's the main important first thing I want to get off my chest. Um, now that we got through that, the public service announcement, let's get to reefing. So what happened since then? I mean, a lot has happened. Um, I got new lights, like I mentioned. I finally got the bubble tip anemone, and I mean, I had really had, I, and it's one of the craziest experiences I had with the bubble tip anemone. I did not expect it to work out the way it did, but it did. Um, 
So I got the bubble tip in me. I put acclimated it and I put it in the tank, right? And I put it in the tank right right towards the bottom, right there, towards the bottom in that in the inside ledge. And the reason I put them right in the middle there because my two clowns, the small one would be on the right side here in this little hole and the big guy was underneath this rock structure. So I put it right in the middle, this way they can see him and be curious and hopefully, I was thinking hopefully they're gonna, you know, wanna host him, you know? And so I put the name in there, I didn't think anything of it and right after I put the anemone in the tank, I realized um, that oh crap! I don't have any uh, I don't have any power head guard for my power power head inside. You know the anemone goes crazy. Um, the, the anemone goes wants to walk around and get into my power head. That's it. You know my tank might crash even. So I realized it. And I bought the anemone on impulse and I'll tell you what happened. So we added also we added the third and final fish, which is um I, <coughs> I don't know if you guessed it, but there he is. Um it's a bristle tooth tank. And he is amazing. I'll be honest, he is a machine. Like since the day I put him in the tank, he has been grazing, doing his thing, patrolling the tank left and right, non-stop, just grazing all over the place, doing what he's supposed to do, keeping the algae at bay, and just nipping at all over the rocks, the glass, and he has just been a trooper, I mean, to be honest. I, I can be more happy and proud of the choice I made as you know with the third and most crucial fish on this tank and I mean that was a win serious win so when I went to go pick him up at my LFS I was walking around and I was you know I was gonna get the anemone like a week or two after I get the tang just to let the tang get acclimated to the tank you don't want I don't want to add two things at the same time so when I went to the LFS, I'm walking around and I see this beautiful anemone and it kind of, and it's got a bunch of different bursts of color on it. It's got like on the blue light, it's like it looks orange with a splash of green and red and I had to find out. So I asked my LF, the person who works there, I'm like, what kind of anemone is it? Is it bubble tip? Because I know bubble tips are usually pink or red. You know? Uh, rose bubble tips, I mean. Um, because that's the one I wanted. And she goes, no, it's a rainbow bubble tip anemone. I was like, you know, she had me at rainbow. And that was it. I was like, I have to get this. And because as I was getting it, as she was packing it up for me, a whole bunch of other new people, like customers, walked in. And I could, and they came, came over, started looking at the anemone, as you know, they were getting ready, getting it ready for me. And I could tell, like, they wanted this anemone. I was like, if I did not make that judgment call at that moment, I bet you they would have bought this this anemone, and I wouldn't have them. And you know, rainbow anemones are. It's not every day you run across a rainbow anemone, bubble tip anemone in your LFS. So. And I got a really good deal on him. I got him for, oh boy, if I remember correctly, I got him for a little over a hundred dollars. It might be less. It's been like it's been like a month and a half, and I forgot. I, it wasn't more than a hundred. I'll tell you that because the price was the one twenty, but then they gave me a discount. So with my discount, I think it was like close to a hundred. So it was a steal. And it was not like he's like a tiny little, tiny little bubble tip anemone. He is decent size and the price was just right. So I'm mean, like everything just, you know, all the stars aligned that day. And I got the anemone that I, I didn't even think I could get. You know, I was just thinking of getting a regular rose bubble tip anemone. And here I walk in and there's this rainbow anemone, bubble tip anemone just waiting. I was like, 
you know, it was just match made in heaven, so I had to get him. So I got him, and I mean, he, he I mean, he is taking a liking to the tank. At first, when I put him in the tank, I had my Chinese LEDs on, and he was okay. He was right where I put him. He didn't move around too much. But the moment I installed the AI Hydra, he just shined. I mean, he extended his about his tips. He started moving closer, closer. He he was in the cave, and he started moving out of the cave so he can get more light. And that's how much you love. And now he's he kind of he started moving. Now he's actually behind the rock work now. He finally settled there like last week. I mean, which sucks because you guys you guys can't see him, but I'll show you I'll show you guys. We'll we'll get, you'll see him on the B roll. Um, so yeah, really really great experience. Um, so the interesting thing. So when I initially put him in in the in the bottom, and I was I was like, holy crap! <coughs> I gotta I gotta put like a, some kind of guard around my power head so to protect him. So I started. I ordered the net from Amazon like a week before, but I just never got a chance to do it. So I'm like scurrying up, hurrying, trying to get this makeshift power head uh, cover ready to protect the anemone. And it took me about 20 minutes to get everything done with the power head. And after I installed the net, I'll show you a close up of the my improvised uh, power head guard. Um, and as I finished, it took me about 20 minutes, right? And as I'm putting the power head back in the tank, the big, the female clown, I see he's already starting to host. He is host, he was, she was hosting in that anemone within 20 minutes. I didn't, I was like shocked. I've never, I mean, no, I, I hear people, I saw so many videos uh, on, on YouTube where people do everything they can to get an anemone to host, uh, a clown to host an anemone. And here I am working on my power head guard and within 20 minutes, my female clown, maroon clown, hosting inside the anemone, she just claimed it on the spot and as as it was exciting and i had I, I, you guys will see the clip right now let me show you guys the clip and as she was hosting it i was like okay this is crazy i've never seen it i didn't have to do nothing i just placed the anemone in between the caves of the two clowns and the big one, the female, she just jumped on it and she was just cuddling that anemone like, it's like she knew it forever. It's like long lost, you know, family member, um, which was good. And I didn't have to do anything on it. You know, she just took a liking to that, to the rainbow anemone and that was it. For those of you guys who are wondering why I'm touching my face, I can't help it. But my hands are clean, my face is clean, so I'm okay. <laughs> now back to the story um, the only sad part out of this whole scenario the male clown she doesn't let him get near that anemone so he is homeless I mean he's got a little cave down here but the female claimed the anemone and she would not let I mean I don't know if she, yeah, actually she wouldn't let him get near that anemone. And and then, and then he lost interest too. Like, I don't, I don't think he likes the anemone a lot because I didn't see, like, when the female was trying to get acclimated to the anemone, she would like go near it and swim around. I was looking to see what the male did and he didn't do nothing. He, he just stayed in his little cave and just looked at the female do that do her thing with the anemone and that was it so the anemone belongs to the female um, lightning maroon uh, the male lightning maroon I don't know I'm not gonna get him another anemone I mean I shouldn't have put one in this tank to begin with but you know I'm stubborn so I had to get one I got one and that's it I mean <laughs> the bad you know they fought it I guess I fought it on the female one it's her anemone now maybe when the anemone gets bigger or maybe in the down the road um, the anemone splits I saw Mark's video uh, how he used a little clear acrylic 
flexible acrylic and push the you know put the anemone onto the uh, the clowns onto the anemone I thought I have to do all of that I was like thinking I'm like how am I gonna get these anemones and the clowns to host each other but you know luck of the draw and it worked out so that's that the anemones and the tank the clowns are happy <coughs> well except for the male I guess he's still lonely um, what was I gonna say it's like so much happened guys um, I mean my bristle to tang um, you'll see him he's active he's he's healthy um, no issues with him you know the cleanup crews are already in there so they're doing their thing the diatoms are gone um, as you know from episode 12 now I, what I also added during that cleanup crew um, phase when I added them I also added a uh, red tuxedo urchin but he did not last so he's right there he's dead um, he probably lasted about I want to say three weeks yeah I mean when I put him in there he did his work he went he circled all around the tank and then one day he was just on the glass the front glass um, and the next morning um, he was on the he was in the sand um, but he was still alive at that point but I, I'm not I don't want to touch him or put him on somewhere and the day after he just died um, it happens uh, with invertebrates it happens uh, with urchins sometimes you know if um, what probably happened was that he probably fell on the sand on his back and he couldn't get himself up or and probably the hermits or the hermit crabs probably ate him who knows I mean I wasn't there but or he was just a bad batch it happens you know it's a lot of, not all livestock not all invertebrates you get is gonna make it you know the mortality the survival the mortality is like 50 something 50 50 so you can't really do nothing about that um, take it with a grain of salt and just keep on moving okay so now that we talked about the anemone the fish the invertebrates let's talk about the water perimeters which is very crucial uh, on a reef tank and something has been happening with mine and I've been trying my best to do weekly testing and what I've noticed is that my alkalinity is reading a six on the range six range so six three six five six seven and it's been it happened for three weeks straight and I would do a water change and I would test it it would be like six point seven so I was like something is wrong so I tested my salt mix and it turns out my salt mix is reading six point seven alk and I started looking into it, and the salt mix I use, I, I this is I, this is a new salt mix I got. This is I got the Red Sea Coral Pro Salt mix. I I used to use the HW Marine Salt when the previous version of this tank when I used to run it, but I I was I wouldn't test my tank like that before, so I didn't really know what the all readings were on that salt mix. But when I started talking to people about the Red Sea Coral Pro Salt, everybody's been telling me that they are known for low alk. And <coughs> even on their website, they say call alk readings at 7. So if they're saying 7, it's usually less than that. So now, what well now I have to think about how to keep my alkalinity at a higher level because if I want to add corals and have them thrive and I want them to grow fast I'm going to need to be maintaining a higher alk level like 8.5 or 9 something like that and I, I was thinking that since this is a nano tank I would get away with water changes and maintain my perimeters that I need to be at stable perimeters as far as chemistry goes but the way it's looking and I looked into other salts as well um, but there's probably like one or two salt out there that even advertises uh, alk levels to be over eight um, so there's not many out there so 
I'm starting to see why most reefers for some in, in the eventually um, end up dosing or um, using carbon dosing for that matter. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to start going in that route with this tank if I want this tank to become what I want it to become, which is I want it to become a thriving reef tank. Nano. I've seen I've seen so many beautiful nano reef tanks on YouTube. Um, I'm not on Instagram or Facebook, so I can't really say what's on there. But on YouTube alone, um, seen so many beautiful nano tanks, and I want this tank to be one of those tanks. You know, one day. Um, and I don't think I can get to that level without dosing. Um, so I did purchase a dosing kit and we'll talk about that probably on episode 14 when it finally gets here I'm gonna do an unboxing and installation installation review of it and you know you guys will be there for the journey and we'll talk about which supplement I'm gonna be dosing on this tank but I mean, I have no choice right now to start dosing um, because the tank is uh, getting mature. If you guys, uh, you know, if you if you can see, I took some shots of the of the aquascape of the tank while the lights off when everything is off at nighttime, and the rock is starting to show its color. You know, starting to turn into live rock. It's not that pure white um, Pukani rock that I got. You know when I aquascaped it. Now the rock is starting to turn live. Um, I can see it with the lights off. You can see it even. You might not see it with the lights on. The lights are actually dying out right now because it is late. Um, yeah, it's like almost two in the morning. So lights are dimming down. We're about to. I think. In, yeah, the lights are dimming down. We're about to hit the moonlight phase. So. But I'll show you guys the B-roll. The B but <coughs> the rocks um, are maturing. And I can tell the tank is getting ready. Um, so pretty soon I'm going to start adding corals. You know, a, But I, before I do that, I need to make sure my perimeters are on check. My calc, calcium, alkalinity, magnesium. Um, nitrates phosphates they all need to be on check so that's gonna be my goal going forward for the next month or so um and oh as far as phosphates goes um speaking of um elements so phosphates are really low in this tank which is which is good and bad in a way because good in a way that means i'm not gonna have Hopefully, fingers crossed, not going to have an algae issue. The bad thing is, it's reading so low <laughs> that my Kato started dying. Uh, <laughs> so, that was concerning. And I spoke to a couple of people. I spoke to Mark from maybe a meal of Reeves. And he said, just feed your tank more. You know, if you have zero phosphates, just feed a little, feed your fishes more, and they'll raise the phosphates a little. So I was, so I started doing that. So before, I was feeding these guys once a day. Now I'm feeding them twice a day. Um, they get pellets around 7:30 p.m. because the lights, the schedule I'm running, and I have the lights turning on at seven, and they ramp up to full range at eight o'clock. An hour ramp up. So around 7:30 they get the my auto feeder right behind there i'm gonna have to position them better i'm gonna have to get a little um bracket here so i can position him here and so he will disperse the food in the little uh the food chimney i got i'll show you guys that too um so yeah so now i'm feeding him twice at 7 30 the auto feeder feeds them the pellets and then around 11 11 30 12 o'clock at night before the the light starts wrapping down I'm gonna feed I feed the mice shrimp speaking of that it's way past their feeding time because I was actually thawing the mice um, the shrimp so let's go feed them really quick just give me a moment just gotta stir this guy up a little before feeding okay looks like 
So all done, I'm just gonna little drop it in there. There we go. We're gonna go crazy. I always drop a little bit near the anemone, that's where he can catch some. There we go. I know, sorry guys, I know it's a little late. I got carried away with my video. Almost, I forgot the food was thawing. So that's taken care of. So at least they'll get to eat before the lights fully go out. So yeah, I just so I just dumped the mice in the tank. I leave. <coughs> I leave the power heads running. This way, they're floating around, and I'll, I'll show you guys in close up how my how I have the power head set up. This way, I'm getting like a crisscross um, effect with the water flow, so they're irregular water flow, which is which is ideal for if you don't want it to be going in a circle or you don't want it to come in all in one direction or either any way. You want the water to be the water movement to be irregular, which is which mimics the ocean, you know, and that's how reef corals love it. So. I have it set up that way, so this way I don't turn the power heads off. This way they'll keep the mice moving all around the tank and it won't go inside the overflow and go into the sump. So that's why I keep my power heads running when I'm feeding them. And also it doesn't let the mice, uh, the shrimp, get fall on the bed easily. I mean, even if it does, I got my clear up crew, they'll, they'll have something to eat then. Um, but the main the focus is to keep the food floating around this way the fishes could eat it so I mean I can see um, the anemone got a good portion of the mice which is good and I will I mean I'll feed them because I want it to grow a little bit bigger and maybe maybe both my lightning maroons will host it maybe the big the female will let the male <laughs> get a piece of that action who knows um, but yeah so back to the top, back to what we're talking about. Uh, so I'm feeding them twice a day now and I've noticed the difference. So my phosphate um, has gone up a little bit. Let me open up my reef trace and I'll give you, tell you guys my reading. <coughs> yeah, so in the beginning, so in, back in February, my ph I was reading phosphates at zero, and it was reading zero for like two weeks in a row, and I was like, something is wrong. I mean, am I doing the test wrong? <laughs> so I tested my tested it two, three times, and it was reading zero at all times. So after I started feeding the fishes more, my phosphates are reading at 0 .07, which is good, which is okay. I'm, 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 I'll take 0 .07. I mean, I would like it to be 0 .03, but it's what it is. Uh, maybe I'll just feed a little bit less mice. You know what I mean? Because there's only like three fishes in here. I don't need to feed them so much mice. Maybe I'll cut down on the mice a little bit. Maybe cut down on the portion of the pellets that uh, the auto feeder gives off. So we can work on it. It's 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 a, it's going in a good direction. So I'm okay with it. Um, so that's that. So. And, uh, you know, I mentioned to you guys previously that I was going to show you guys um, my mixing station and all. We'll save it for another episode. Um, it's late today, so I'm not going to get to shoot the, I'm not going to get to shoot the, uh, my mixing station. But, hold me to it. I'll show you guys in the next episode my mixing station. Um, we're going to have a lot to talk about on the next episode, episode 14. Um... Now that I'm home, <laughs> because of COVID, so I'll be doing a lot of stuff on the tank. A little small tinkering here and there. Um, it's a great time, guys. Great time to give your tank the attention it needs and deserves. Um, small projects that you probably, you know, kept pushing off. Now is the time to do it, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I mean, I got my dosing pump coming in. My dose, my um, chemicals are coming in, so I'm going to be busy with that, setting it up, getting it hooked up properly, and and dialing in the dosing on it. Really excited, uh, and you know, 
And what I'm also concerned about is the fact that with this COVID situation, lots of uh, events are being canceled. Uh, I know they canceled the Niagara Falls uh, event because um, Canada shut down their borders. And so it's a concern. I mean, today I was on uh, Mila's um, live stream and somebody said that um, they canceled Palooza Orlando. Um, which I was, which is a bummer, and I hope they only cancel the Orlando Palooza and not the New York, which is in June, um, third week of June, I believe, which is right around my birthday. <coughs> so let me let me really check uh, when Palooza Orlando is, because I believe that's before uh, Palooza New York. But let's just double check. Yeah, I mean, if you go to reefapaloozashow.net, Orlando says postponed. Yeah, let me show you guys. Orlando is postponed. Yeah, Orlando's postponed. Uh, let me see more. See if they give any, you know, reasoning. Yeah, so, based on what I'm seeing, it was going to be next month. Yeah, it was going to be April 25th from, yeah, it was good, April 25th and 26th, so which is next month. So, which is normal for them to cancel, well, postpone it. Um, so, if they're postponing Orlando in April, after April, the next one is in New York, which is in June, um, June 25th, 26th. So that means that might get postponed too, cause I'm I don't know how I don't know how they're gonna do it. Are they gonna just do it in May? Do the Orlando in May if they can? Who knows with this Palooza with this COVID situation? Um, yeah, it's really concerning, um, cause if they postpone in April, I doubt situation is going to get better by May so then we're in June so what are they going to do are they going to postpone New York and do Orlando in June and then do New York later or they it's it's up in the air right now and that's a little that's really a bummer I mean this COVID is just all sorts of <laughs> Mood kill um, because I was so looking forward to going to Orlando, uh, Rifa Palooza, New York, not the Orlando one, Rifa Palooza, New York. Because um, I was gonna, that's where I was gonna get all the corals to fit put in this nano. Now I can't because God knows when New York Rifa Palooza is gonna happen or if it's gonna happen at all. Um, I mean, from what we're hearing, this COVID situation is going to get worse before it gets better. So, we're not even at the worst yet. And this is end of March. So, it's not looking too good, guys. Um, what I might end up having to do is stock, the, stock up the Nano Reef, just buying the corals online. Or from L my local LFS store, if they're open for that matter so it's gonna be tough and it sucks but it's also there's positive in it as well you know I get to spend more time with my tank you know now that I'm working remotely I get to look after the tank you know it's my workstation is right there and my tank is right here so I can look at it all day see what's happening uh, speaking of what's happening I gotta top off my R reservoir I, I heard or I saw it emptied out today, so that's gonna be next. What am I do tomorrow? Procrastination. <laughs> so yeah, so there's a lot of time in your hand right now. Focus on your tank. So do that. 
Um, if you have any questions, guys, put it on the comment section. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. As you saw my review of the AI, AI Hydro 26, and some people are like, "Oh, that's an old, that's an old light. That light is like two, three years old. Do they still make it?" I'm like, and doesn't matter. You know, as long as it does what you need it to do, and you know that's the most important thing. Um, and part of the reason I got a good deal on it because that light is a couple of years old. You know, if I were to get the you know the latest and the greatest, it would cost me an arm and a leg. So the money I saved by buying something older, I could use that money to spend on something that I really need for the tank. You know, not all of us have the financial freedom to spend all the money or whatever money we want on our tanks. Some of us are on a budget. So for budget reefers, you know, this is um, this is the best place. You know, I'm going to talk, I, I'm going to do budget stuff. I don't have the financial freedom. Well, not as much financial freedom I would like to be able to get, you know, A1 equipment, A1 um, supplies and you don't have to and that's the beauty of this hobby you don't have to have the most expensive the most up-to-date products or equipment to be successful um, there's so many videos on YouTube that people run successful tanks with no equipment no sump no protein skimmers nothing just water change people survive and have thriving reef tech on just water change you know, so you can be whatever type of hobbyist you want to be, as long as you're committed to it. You know, that's something you can't buy. Commitment to your to the hobby, commitment to your reef tank is something money cannot buy. Either you have it or you don't. You know, you can have all the money, you can have all the fancy equipment, but if you don't have the commitment to your reef tank, those all the equipment in the world is not going to help you. There's still going to be the need for a human uh, input. Um, and if you don't have the commitment, you're not going to succeed. So that's my message to you guys. You know, don't, you know, people might hate on you. Oh, you know, people might hate on you if you have a Chinese LED light, you know. It's like, you know, if it gets the job done, don't listen to nobody. Do what you have to do and just keep your head down. Just stay on top of the husbandry and you'll see success. Um... You know, if you need to spend the money, spend the money on where you need to spend the money. And, you know, lighting is something I thought was important for my reef tank. Uh, so that's why I spent the, you know, a little bit extra money and got the AI Hydra. Um, was there more expensive options out there? Yeah, of course. There's always something better and, you know, more expensive. Doesn't mean you have to get it. You know, as long as you're satisfied with what you have, you know, just stick to that. And, uh, yeah, so if you like the content, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. Um, <coughs> if you have suggestions, um, other than me not coughing. <laughs> um, yeah, leave it in the comment section below. And, you know, thank you for taking the time to watch the video. I know it's a little long video, but we had a lot to catch up on. I like to blabber, but we have we had a lot to catch up on since episode 12. A lot has happened. So, with that being said, I'm going to let you guys go. Um, be safe out there. You know, try to... Um, try to use do the social distancing thing. Um, and quarantine yourself. You know, think about... You think about the people out there and don't try to go out unless you have no choice to go outside and be safe and take care of your reef tanks and they will take care of you in return. So until next time guys, take care. Happy reefing.